Um, I am Chindresa. Um, I'm so glad to be here. Um, I am a software developer, and um, this is my third time actually attending Open Source Summit. And I'm here with my sister, Agbiona. Um, we're together from the Coder Girls team. Um, so uh, we've decided to elaborate on this topic because we were affected a lot from different tech communities uh, within our country. And today we will be sharing our story on how we're giving back to other communities. So we live in Kosovo, which is the youngest country in Europe. Um, even though we're not in Europe yet, it has a population of around 2 million, where half of this population is under the age of 25. Uh, we both studied computer science at the University of Brisbane in our hometown. And due to the lack of communities and job opportunities, uh, we had to use armored-based scholarships to move to the capital city of Kosovo, which is Pristina. And there we both attended lots of hackathons, workshops, startup competitions, and we managed to create a network with um, lots of value. Um, one of the most uh, amazing experiences I had was being an exchange student in the United States, where I was inspired what the community is and what it means and how important it is to us. So. That was the time that we started to put more effort into things that seem to have significance in our society. From that experience, I had the chance to build up a great network with different backgrounds, and that's how we started to build up communities. After finishing my studies, I've got the extensive support from the United States Embassy in Pristina, so we, the first thing that we started to do was to start up the community, a community of girls in coding because we knew where we started from and we wanted to make sure that we can have a difference on this starting point for other people in our hometown. So Coda Girls was the name of the first hackathon that we did three years ago. And the idea of organizing this event was to start and engage youth in our community, especially girls. And where they could have more opportunities on practicing different skills and build a network without needing to spend their scholarships, of course. Um, this hackathon was an event where 26 girls from all around Kosovo came there to work on coding challenges and build up a great network for their future. So um, during this event, they had the chance to go through GitHub accounts, um, blogs, open source, contributions, Linux, and Debian. Our main goal for this hackathon was to give them a glance at um, what you can do using free software. And that is how we set up this event. The participants were mostly students, so they were new to the industry. So they needed to be informed what is happening out there and what's being part of this kind of event is the same as being part of an event organized by huge corporations, as long as you work on something that is making a difference. Um, so these participants were divided into five groups and um, each group was assigned to a technical challenge where they had to work on for two days. And these challenges were open source projects that were selected by the mentors. So the groups had five mentors available to guide them through their projects where they're going, they were going to work on. These mentors were people, um, entrepreneurs, developers, and people who were working on their own startups or their own corporations, uh, which were focused on building software products and services. So they had the chance to work on their blog projects, push their changes on their GitHub accounts, which was new to 90% of the participants, and then continue to presentations and networking. So um, this is one of the ways that we started and uh, we continued with other parts of the story, such as Google Summer of Code, Coder Girls is second, and our company, WeTech. We were able to catch and create main values within these communities, including soft skills, technical skills, and preparation for the global market, which I, I will leave Albiona to tell you more about those. Albiona? Can you hear me? Continue with the second part of 
our work uh, with the community of Quarter Girls. Let me just fix these headphones because I'm hearing myself. Okay. Um, so we started, as soon as I explained, uh, with our work in the open source and community uh, in our home country. Uh, we both started, like, we both studied computer science in our hometown, and that was one of the reasons why um, we were able to get to know the tech world and have the opportunity to win different scholarships and move to the capital city of Kosovo, Pristina, so that we can be part of a bigger community with different opportunities to learn, to be active in different uh, workshops, uh, NGOs, etc. Why we started uh, to with the focus on the communities is is for a lot of reasons. And some of the successes that were follow up after our hackathon was that three of the participants were accepted at the Google Summer of Code. And that reason was, that story was very, very amazing because us as a new group or uh, an, two girls that started from scratch have to organize a hackathon and then using that hackathon all of the girls that were part of it and the mentors, we kind of created the community to work together on stuff, such as we went on and um, participated different workshops, hackathons, startup challenges, etc. cetera. Uh, I have to mention that in Kosovo, there are plenty of NGOs who work a lot on giving the youth the opportunities and the resources. So having it a success or an outcome, which is a global uh, organization, as such as Google Summer of Code uh, Internship, getting into the list, the Kosovo, like Kosovo country for students having from this place, it's an amazing opportunity. So that kept us on working, that, that pushed us on working more on developing our communities. And I will have to share, I will share some specific experience that we built besides the coding, uh, Code Gals uh, NGO. Uh, we started organizing the Toastmasters, uh, we started organizing the Toastmasters Club Pristina um, in February last year for the first time. And it was the first club in all of the countries in the Balkans. Uh, I will share in the end why I'm sharing this story. It's all connecting to the communities that we are part of or that we created. Um, due to the network that we had, we were able to use that so that our mentors or people that we know from outside of Kosovo were supporting us and pushing us on doing these projects. When thinking about Kodigals that we started from scratch, it is an amazing opportunity for others to see us doing that work. And we kind of get got a lot of feedback. And one of that was the uh, us girls from Kosovo, which was not developed in the field of technology, being true leaders. But what exactly does being a true leader And that so let me check. Okay. Um, the, from the time being, uh, and the time went very quickly. Um, we are now here a year and a half later, and we are organizing two meetings per month in the Toastmasters Club. One of the things that was really successful or that kept us on continuing these meetups was the values that we wanted to share or to create for our uh, members or, or people who were uh, attending our meetups. Um, the three lessons that I learned while I was building these communities together with Chandreza is uh, uh, one of the things is providing value first. Some of you might already know the Toastmasters program, how things work there, but do 
I will explain a little the program. They provide a, a, an agenda where a lot of roles are part of the meetup. So people who attend the meetup, they, they will have a specific role and they will work during the meetup. They will have to be interactive with one another. And in that way, they, they build their own like path to developing their, the skills that they want to, such as uh, managing, leadership, communication skills, and speech and speaking, of course. If they want to be speakers, evaluators, or if they don't want to be in front of the audience, then they will have they can have tasks that are in the backstage, such as organizing the meetup, dealing with all the social media posts, etc. That gave us a lot of uh, opportunities when it comes to winning the people to come again and again in our meetups. And that value was very much used because everyone who came, they shared their own experiences, their own values, and they went from each other, like they learned from each other. Uh, the other thing is that community needed leaders. And why was that is that for us to be there, we had to uh, create some kind of a tactic knowledge sessions where the network that came up again and again can have reasons why they are showing up consistently. One of the things was that if now we have members, then they continued, they wanted to have their own space to influence others. So for us as leaders, we needed to take a step back and provide them the space, the opportunities for them to take the role of a leader or an organizer, uh, et cetera, so that they can influence others and invite other people to join the meetups. That was one of the things that kept on growing the community and making it bigger so that other people will, will were joining again and again. The other value was for the culture that we had inside our meetup. That was one of the best things because for building, to build commun communities, it was very important one part when it comes to uh, having relationships in between the members. The relationships between the members were very important because they had to have reason, as I said earlier, to be part of the meetups. So in this regard, having a system's belief, norms and rituals that's the bigger that that are bigger than yourself, than myself, than others, having a bigger role and a bigger purpose. So together as a group, we can work towards that. These kind of kept the group together and kept the communities uh, the community work and be consistently on their activities. Why am I sharing it is that when we organized the Coder Girls Hackathon, it was very interesting seeing people that are very interested to develop their skills, technical skills, but didn't have uh, the ways to get in touch with others or get to talk with others uh, say they express their needs, express their pur purpose and asking for help. And due to the activity that we did, activities that we did with uh, Toastmasters was that the same people were attending our Coregal's activities and the Toastmasters activities. We were a bunch of students or let's say programmers, coders who wanted to develop their public speaking skills, leadership skills, etc. So it kind of get into together as a whole that it worked very good. Chandresa on focusing for coder girls and the coding sessions and me focusing on the leadership, public speaking, etc. What we are planning is that we are continuing the hackathons that we did in 2017. We did up until now only two that were bigger than the small workshops that we did. Now it will come the second biggest hackathon that will be later this year. It will be Coregal's second, 
which um, this is the kind of would be the same format, but for us, it will be achieving some new purpose or some new goals when it comes to having a close relationship with com communities, organizations that are in Europe or in the US. Because why is that important is that when we are inviting people coming to our country is that our youth will have the opportunities to connect with them, to ask questions, to get resources and to kind of get the feeling how it is to be in a global market. That's the reason why we need those people to come in Kosovo because Kosovo doesn't have the opportunities to go out because we don't have uh, visa liberalization. We are a new country in a developing mode. So for us, it's always a great opportunity to organize events, organize conferences and invite other people to Kosovo. At the same time, we would have to create, we would be very uh, active in organizing, building communities, technology, public speaking, etc. And then getting out of that is that preparing our youth to be ready for the global market. That was our main theme from the beginning on organizing events, organizing meetups, getting the right skill set to our youth because they don't have the necessary tools as same as we didn't in the beginning. And then have the opportunity to work even in those special times like the coronavirus where everyone is working remotely, why not preparing for the global market uh, target to work on projects or companies that are globally uh, known and work from here, from Kosovo. That is our main goal into all the community work, all the organization, public speaking, and then the company that me, Chandrisa and I founded, the WeTech company, which gives opportunities to students or community members that we have in the NGO to work on projects that we outsource uh, from Kosovo. So that was kind of a really huge success for us because from the other co conferences that we attended earlier, because this is our third time attending the Linux Foundation uh, Open Source Summit Conference, it is a really, can you hear me? It is a really great opportunity to um, be part of the uh, this community because we won a lot earlier. Um, it is our third time, as I said earlier, and it, it is our first time being a speaker. So excuse us uh, for uh, not getting prepared for the uh, for in time for the uh, technical stuff and for uh, our topic that is all about communities and our work together here in Kosovo. For you might be a simple or a small work, but for us, it is a huge uh, effect on our country because we are a small country and our youth is like 80% of the population. So we need it the most. Um, for, the, for more information, we would like to connect with all of you who joined our talk. So we will write to you and uh, share our, slides and share our information and we'll get back to how we can uh, network, how can we use the opportunity to uh, share our plans and uh, future events that we might organize in Kosovo and invite you all in here so that you can share your experiences and your background with us. Um, I think that was all from my part and our talk. Okay, so um, anybody who has a question, um, now is the right time to do that. We'll be here to answering you. Okay, um, if we have any question, we can answer now. Um, I would like to share more stuff. Uh, we have more time, so if we have questions, we can answer them. 
If not, uh, I would like to add more information regarding our Corregal's NGO and how we can get in contact um, for our future events. I, the main uh, sponsor for us is the U.S. Embassy, uh, as Sundresa noted uh, earlier. The U.S. Embassy supports us on organizing the big uh, events. But the other that events that are uh, smaller for the community works, meetups, monthly, that are we organize them uh, on our own uh, efforts. And uh, our main interest, as I said, is to get into the right resources or or uh, right resources or uh, communication with people who want to support or get into the development workflow for helping countries in developing mode or there, that are or exist different programs to help girls in technology uh, have diversity in different projects for example and from the Eastern Europe, then it will be a really good fit for us. Um, we, you can find us at the codegals.github.io. Uh, of course, we will share information more in the list of the uh, attendees. So we will get back to you and with our future plans. The other information that I would like to share is the second edition of the Coded Girls Hackathon, which will be this year. Uh, our main focus is always in the open source world to contribute in different projects and at the same time learn and have the right experience that we want to have. So uh, if you are someone for uh, that works in a, an open source project organization and wants to contribute uh, in the way that we could organize and create a community here in Kosovo for that project. We can talk and we can work toward that thing. Um, th that's how we did with Debian. Uh, we were, we started with the Coder Girls, we started working on Debian issues in 2017. We invited Debian developers here in Kosovo. And then after that, we attended for three times in a row the Debian uh, conference, which was in Taiwan and in Brazil last year. And it was a really huge success for us as a community because uh, one of the thing, uh, one of the successes was that we applied to uh, host the Debian conference in Kosovo for 2021. And we won the competition with other countries that were long time Debian com contributors and big communities. Uh, we want to have the conference and in the for the first time in the local team of Debian conference, we are four girls who will organize the event and uh, will give like we're, we'll work on hosting a the event for about five to eight hundred people that will attend. Uh, because, as you may already know, Kosovo is a, a really good part of Europe. It is close to kind of everyone in Europe and even in the East. Um, so, yeah, that was a really huge success for us as a Code Girls community to win uh, the bid for hosting the Debian conference. From that, that's how we started working on open source community uh, projects uh, where we could organize and held our uh, like build from scratch different community communities of open source in Kosovo, as I noticed, as I mentioned earlier. Um, if we have any question, then we can uh, answer you right away and if yes, not um, i think i guess we have we have um, a comment we here have from Gens. a little more time to another talk and yeah just wanted to kind of give an overview of our work as a community in kosovo and if you want to reach out to us please go to the codegals.github.io and you can find our contact there and of course we will be writing to the uh, 
members list uh, here in the conference that are live and reach out to you to see the opportunities to collaborate. Okay, so um, if no one else has a question, we just can end up here and uh, feel free to reach out to us on the channels that Albiona told you.